Hello everyone, here we have the Arthrex uh, bunionectomy set and I wanted to introduce you two of the newer additions uh, that we see and that's the parallel guide. Uh, there's a 30 degree option for you. It has five holes in it that can accommodate the K wires for the 3.5 or the 4.0 millimeter screw. We also see its sibling here which is a 25 degree option as well. And you'd use this in conjunction with the shifting device and then this can be placed on the medial skin. So the 30 and the 25 degree angle are really in reference to the declination or inclination that the K wires are gonna make against the metatarsal. So the 25 degree angle is gonna give a little bit of a steeper alignment and placement of the K wires into the metatarsal. I still think it's important to mark out the midline of your metatarsals. You have a tendency to wanna to be a little more plantar than you should be. So we've employed a transverse cut through the small percutaneous incision here. Uh, the transverse cut's just proximal to the uh, sesamoids. If you need another point of fixation or you really want to supinate the toe, you can put another wire off axis and then simply supinate the toe, and that can help you with your sesamoid correction. Ideally right to the lateral part of the metatarsal head. Now we can take that other wire out if you're happy with your position. And that's just an optional step for those toes that have a little bit more supination. We can start shifting the metatarsal. If you're going to do this fairly quickly, and I'd say within five minutes to ten minutes, then I don't think you need to make an extra cut for that paddle on the skin. If you are going to keep this on for a while or if you're just starting out on MIS surgeries, then I probably would make a small incision so it doesn't cause any necrosis of the skin. And you can see we've shifted probably 50 to 60 percent. Here you can see the 30 degree parallel guide and the notch, the very tip, which fits in nicely with the shifting device. So that has a little bit of a nice fit right in through that area. So you can kind of get a feeling of where it's supposed to be there. Now, you still have to be cognizant of where you are in terms of shooting these pins too dorsal or shooting them too plantarly. But you've got the marks on the skin to help you with that. And you've got that notch in the guide to help it lock into this area there. So I've got the 30 degree guide right against the shifting device. And I'm just arbitrarily using the middle hole for the gay wire. So we'll put this, we'll get a little shot of fluoro and see what our alignment's going to be. So that looks like that'll be a good medial, more distal screw. We've just placed the guide wire for our more distal screw. The parallel guide is radiolucent, and we can see we're in the metatarsal head there. In this particular case, we might be able to use that more proximal screw hole. You can't put these two K wires next to each other. There won't be enough room for the screws. So you just need exactly one space between the two K wires. If you want to get more proximal, you just slide this one more away in this area here. Could be sending you a little bit more proximally of a little bit more separation between the two. But depending on what your alignment is, this can be shifted once you have one good K wire. So in this uh, particular case, we can see we've now skipped two holes in the parallel guide and perhaps that shifted us a little too proximal. Oftentimes you will get a fortunate and can just put it into the first pass and just skip a hole in the middle. Now keep in mind when you are doing this, you can put a little English on this guide before you put it into the bone. So if you just need another couple degrees here and there, won't make it perfectly parallel, but sometimes I'll do that if I just want to make that more proximal screw angle a little bit more laterally. On this image, you can see that that more proximal wire is exiting the lateral cortex proximally and then entering into the metatarsal head more distally. So you really want that tricortical fixation with this more proximal screw. We can see the parallel guide has worked and placed both K wires in the metatarsal, both proximally and distally. So another use of the parallel guide is using the shifting device, using the trajectory guide that accompanies the shifting device. And then if you're having success with one of the wires, but having a hard time placing the second, then you can use the wire that you've already passed and then use the parallel guide to help you get your second wire. And again, you want to skip one spot in the guide. In this fluoroscopic image, we can see that the use of the 30 degree guide has helped with our placement of the distal screw. So in this step, we're using our depth gauge and you can see the laser line there measuring just a little over 40. 
There's a laser line on the shaft of the screwdriver and you can be mindful when you're placing the screw of where that relates to the bevel of the screw itself so that you can make sure with less instances of fluoro that the screw is flush with the metatarsal. So here we're happy with both the positions of the beveled screws, the overall shift of our capital fragment. We would go on to do the Aiken portion of the MIS in this particular case, as well as shaving down carefully some of that overhanging ledge of bone on the distal medial aspect of the metatarsal, just proximal to where the shift was made. In this particular case, we have used the 30 degree guide, uh, but if you wanted a little bit more of a proximal starting point, then you can definitely use the 25 degree angled guide as well, which would give you a little bit more proximal start point with a little sharper angle.